Joining me now is Dr. Daniel Lucy. He's an adjunct professor at Georgetown University Medical Center. Uh, Dr. Lucy, we just heard there Dr. Muyemba is speaking. Uh, he's also said in an interview, from now on, we will no longer say that Ebola is not curable. Is that something you thought you'd be hearing now? No, but it's something I've hoped for for many years, and certainly for the past five years since the West African Ebola tragedy of Ebola. And a a as somebody who, who's worked on this for so long, who's been following this, how do you feel hearing that? Wonderful. It's a long road ahead, but this is wonderful news, something that we've never um, had the privilege of, of having effective treatments before. And I want to make a distinction for our viewers. We're not talking about a vaccine here. We're talking about treatment, medical treatment drugs for uh, people who've already contracted the virus. We've just reported about this new uh, death in South Kivu in a different province, a 24-year-old mother. Uh, do you know if she was receiving this treatment? Did it not work for her? Um, so I only know what's come from Dr. or Professor Moembe and, and others in the in the Congo and the reports that they put out every day. And so I, as far as I know, the answer is no, she was not um, receiving this treatment. She did not come into a treatment center, which is where these antibody treatments are, are available for her or for her two children. What I'm reading is uh, that it has an efficacy of 90%. Do we know why it doesn't, uh, the other 10%, why it's not working? What types of conditions it won't work under? Well, I think 90% is the, is the most optimistic. Uh, a lot depends on how ill you are with Ebola and how many days you've been sick with Ebola before treatment starts. Talk about the process of getting these two drugs fast track and also the cooperation that was involved. Well, I think both are tremendous examples of uh, uh, collaboration between the Congo and the international community. Um, the report itself that came out this past Monday about these two drugs uh, was a, a press release from the uh, Congo, from the INRB laboratory headed by Professor Mayumbi and the World Health Organization and the U.S. National Institutes of Health up, up the street at, uh, in Bethesda, Maryland. So, uh, spell this out for us. How different is what happened versus what is the traditional timeline? Well, this is highly accelerated, and it's a clinical study that's done under the worst of conditions, or I'd say the most difficult conditions. There's basically a chronic civil war for the past 25 years going on in the Eastern Congo. And this clinical trial, which is called a randomized controlled trial, it's the gold standard for finding out if a treatment works. And, and that was successfully done, comparing four different uh, uh, investigational treatments, and these two were shown to be uh, quite effective. The U.S. was categorizing Ebola, or perhaps preparing to categorize it, I'm not sure, as bioterrorism. Does that, does that change any of the response mechanism or its ability to be fast-tracked? Was that involved in the discussions? Uh, not to the best of my knowledge. You know, long ago I worked at the Food and Drug Administration, et cetera, and I really haven't heard anybody talk about uh, Ebola as bioterrorism since 2001, 2002. Um, I think it's because of the terrible tragedy of, in West Africa in 2014, 15 with Ebola that the world recognized that um, potential treatments and potential um, vaccines for Ebola had to be fast-tracked. Bigger picture, does this potentially change the way the international medical community will respond to outbreaks? Well, it certainly potentially does because it's a, what we call proof of concept. We've, we've gotten success here with these, with these uh, antibody treatments for Ebola, so why not try similar randomized controlled trials for other terrible viruses like Marburg or Congo Crimean hemorrhagic fever or Lassa or many, many others. I know lots of people working hard on this and really celebrating success. Dr. Dan Lucy, thank you for your insight. Thank you, Roy.